All right, we are on to day three, the last day of the beginner phase, first phase of the dumbbell only program. And much like the other videos, we're gonna be doing a little bit of mobility before we start this full body workout. And the first one is gonna be some lower body, and we're gonna be doing some floor sweeps. That's a pretty simple exercise, um, but there is a few components in it that I just wanna talk about. You're gonna be in the standing position, and you're gonna be kind of walking forward as you do it. But the first step in this mobility exercise is going to be placing your foot forward, right in front of you, and it's gonna be heel. So as you do that, you're gonna be stepping forward, you're gonna be bending down and just act like you're kind of sweeping the floor with your hands here. And of course, as you can see, I'm not super flexible, but you're gonna feel that nice stretch in the hamstring. It's also gonna be working a little bit on that hip mobility and then going right in here. Take the next step, sweep. You can take about 10 steps or so. You'll really be able to feel that in the hamstring and also a little bit in that lower back. And you're gonna have a bit bend in the thoracic spine area there. Uh, but as soon as you take that 10, 10 steps one way, you can immediately turn around and go on to the next. So it's pretty simple, as you usually do in any kind of mobility work. You're not overly uh, performing these exercises. You're really only doing maybe a couple sets just to kind of loosen things up because you're gonna be doing multiple exercises for your mobility work. Now the next one I wanna talk about is gonna be some hip mobility, specifically right in the hip joint, which is gonna be open the gate and close the gate. And what you're gonna be doing is bringing your knee up. And you're gonna be opening the gate by bringing it up and rotating out. So you're gonna be doing little circles there with your leg. Really getting to feel that hip open up. Feel a little stretch in the, uh, the adductor there, the inner thigh area. Be forming about 10 or so, opening the gate, and then immediately go on to closing the gate. Making those small circles. You can kind of go as far out as you can, and then bring it in as you can, so that way you'll kind of feel a little bit of that tension in the muscle there. And of course, once you complete one side, 10 reps going each way, you're gonna immediately go on to the next side here. Open the hips up. So open the gate and then try to get 10 and go right into close the gate. So it's a very simple, simple exercise you can perform. It's really just open the hips up. You can also immediately go into kind of like hip circles. Those are really easy, kind of easy to hip, get them a hip warm up. Uh, but of course you can't forget about the upper body. And since this is also uh, some upper body in this workout, since it's full body, we're gonna be performing some uh, some upper body mobility as well. Now, a couple of ones I like, uh, of course, right away is gonna be the wall slides. And you probably, if you've followed us before, we're a big advocate of wall slides. And it's pretty simple. You can just take a seat. And once you're in that seated position, bring your arms up and you're gonna have full contact with the lower back, upper back, the back of your arms and forearms here. You're gonna get a nice Y shape or a V shape. And then you're gonna bring your elbows down as far as you can into the back pocket area. Feel that tension in that shoulder and then back up to the top position. So you try not to arch the back, bringing the back off the wall. Really try to keep it attached to the wall and also the arms too. So if your elbows are kind of picking up, as you can tell, they're picking off the wall. You're trying to go too far down. So just kind of limit the range of motion until you feel that really good activation in there and then bring it back up to that top position. Nice fluid motion, you get about 10 or 12 reps or so. So this one's nice, because all you really need is a wall. And uh, it's actually feel really good activation in the shoulder too, and actually can be a pretty good workout as well. Really get that warm up, kind of hit those rotator cuffs as well. Just the positioning there is gonna kind of put tension in there, but also just kind of get those shoulders ready for the workout. So one more um, mobility exercise that I really enjoy, and I think you guys will too, is, is gonna be kind of lower body slash upper body. It's gonna be the scorpions. Now this one, we're gonna need a little bit more room for it. We're gonna be lying flat down, uh, face down, uh, in the prone position on the, on the ground here. So we're gonna walk over here. Okay, we got a nice wide space here. You're gonna be lying flat, and your arms are gonna be spread out here. You're gonna try to get your shoulders against the, uh, the ground as much as you can. 
and you can be bringing one leg up, almost like a scorpion, as you can tell, like a scorpion tail. And you're gonna try to touch, go back down, and then the opposite side. Now, the trick is, when you're doing these, try not to, as you rotate, pick your shoulder off to compensate, to really try to get that, uh, that foot down to the ground there. So really keep those shoulders placed on the ground. Rotate as much as you can. Try to touch the ground. If you can't, that's okay, because you can always work into a farther range of motion as you get more mobile. So as you can tell, this is working on a little bit of the hip, some of the thoracic spine, shoulder mobility. And the shoulder mobility comes from trying to keep that shoulder flat against the ground there. So those are some quick mobility exercises that you can perform uh, before any workout. But uh, this one specifically that we're doing today because it's full, full body. And now that we've done that, now that we feel a little bit more warmed up and ready to go, we're gonna start the workout, which is gonna be uh, some step ups. Now you notice in this workout, it's gonna be all unilateral work, which this was on purpose. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but for now, let's get these step ups going and get this started. <clears throat> step ups, and as you can see here, we have two different heights on the boxes. Now you can use boxes, you can use steps, you can use a bench. So there's a lot of, of different variety of things that you can use to be able to step up and perform this exercise. But thankfully, the gym we have, or we're using, has these boxes here in different heights too. So I just wanna kinda of go over the differences of using um, a shorter one to a tall one. Now of course, I'm sure, as you would probably guess, a shorter one's gonna be a bit easier. It's gonna be easier on you because you're not having to step as far, it's not putting as much stress on the muscles. So you pretty much is gonna be fairly simple movement as you can tell. Now the the degree of, of on the knee and the hip is just about, or excuse me, the, the ratio of the upper leg and the lower leg is it's about a 90 degree angle, which is about perfect. The hip crease is in line with the knee joint there. So it's about a standard, um, standard kind of positioning you would perform in these here. But as you increase through here, now all of a sudden the hip crease is quite a bit lower than the knee joint here. And this would be um, kind of comparable to, let's say, a deep squat. Whenever you're deep squatting, the hip crease is gonna be below the knee, and it's gonna create more activation in the glute, uh, a little bit in the hamstring, and also the quad muscle here. So you're gonna have, it's gonna be forced to work a bit harder to get you up to that top position. It's lengthening um, that range of motion there. So it's gonna be a bit more difficult. So if you're new to this exercise, I would suggest you perform it on a box that's a bit lower, and even still lower than this, if you are very new to this exercise. Just shorten the range of motion until you're strong enough, uh, to perform this um, at a more difficult level here. But since this is the dumbbell program, as you can see, we're gonna be holding some dumbbells. And this, funny enough, is actually sometimes gonna help ground you. So it's lowering your center of gravity, as we've talked about in the other videos. All of a sudden, you that weight is below your center of gravity, so it's lowering it. So you're gonna feel a bit more stable, even though it's gonna be more difficult because there's more weight. But you're gonna feel more grounded. You're gonna feel a little bit more stable in that sense to be able to perform these. Now, a couple of things you want to remember in this exercise. You want to keep a vertical torso. As the torso starts leaning forward, put unnecessary pressure on the knee joint there because now all of a sudden the weight is distributed on the balls of your feet and you're going to be rocking forward here. So really try to keep that vertical torso. That'll keep the weight distributed correctly and that way you're pushing through the middle of your foot. Another thing is too, the leg that you're using um, for stability below you know, you'll want to sometimes push off of this leg here. And it's a little bit cheating, so you can kind of create some momentum, you push. And of course, you can do that in the later reps if it gets a little too hard and you're kind of basically spotting yourself, almost like force reps, where maybe the last two reps, pretty difficult, push off a little bit, help yourself up, kind of push, help yourself up. But the problem is, if you do that right in the beginning, you're not stressing the muscles as much as you should. And it's kind of a bad habit to get into. Um, and just makes it easier for you. So what we're all about, of course, is making it harder, more difficult, so that way you're forcing the adaptation process and you're getting those gains. You're getting the buff dude gains, baby. Just got done with the step ups. Damn good exercise, that one. And now we're on to the single arm dumbbell rows. And like I was saying before, all of these are gonna be unilateral work. So they're gonna be utilizing one side uh, for the full amount of repetitions, so it's gonna be 10 reps and then moving on to the next side. And we get a lot of questions, and we have a lot of questions in the past, um, asking one side is bigger, one side stronger, how do I uh, try to get a bit more symmetrical in that sense? And unilateral work is a perfect component to introduce 
if you are dealing with any asymmetrical problems. Now that's why we inclu include this day, specifically in the beginner phase two, of all unilateral work because one, it's going to show you which side is more dominant, is stronger, maybe has a little bit more, um, you know, kind of a, a one up on the other side or deficiencies in the other side. So that way you can key in on that and start introducing some work to make sure you become more symmetrical because the longer you go in not recognizing this problem, the more asymmetric you're gonna be. So one side could be very dominant after lifting years and years without really recognizing it or introducing unilateral work. So that's why we're introducing this day of all unilateral work. So that way you can kind of key in on that. And now that we got that uh, explanation over, we're gonna go into the bent over one arm rows. And this one is uh, it's pretty simple, um, yet we do wanna go over some of the, the issues that can happen in this exercise. Um, as you can see here, we're using a bench. Now you can also do a standing in position too, which is essentially just using your own leg for support here, just putting your forearm in there. And it's pretty much mimicking the same positioning here, but sometimes, you know, it might feel uncomfortable because your leg isn't as strong or stable. So when you're putting that weight on it, you're like, eh, you know, it feels kind of wonky. So what you do is you can introduce a bench in here. So the bench is nice and stable. You can put the full knee and weight onto the bench and you can feel a bit more stable. And you can kick your leg out wide, as you can see here. Now, a lot of people can kind of kick it back just like so. And what that's going to do is create instability in there because the weight's going to want to pull you to one side and you're going to feel unstable. So it's a, it makes, the diff it makes the movement a bit more difficult. So if you want to add that extra kind of core activation to stabilize that motion, you can have the leg straight back. Or if you want a little bit more stable, you can kick the leg straight out here. It's gonna increase the base of support like we've been saying in the last two videos. With a wider base of support, the more stable you're gonna be. So the leg's gonna be kicked out. You're gonna have a horizontal torso to the floor. And then you can be grasping the weight and you can pull it nice and high. Now as you pull that weight up, what you don't want to do is turn with the weight. So I'll see this a lot when the weight's too heavy, you're turning with it, and it's going to trick you thinking that you're going to get the full range of motion. Like, oh, my elbow's coming up. But realistically, if you, if you bring it up here and then you twist your weight back, you can see you're getting barely the range of motion you should be getting. So really try to keep that chest pointed down at all times. And as you roll that weight up, don't turn with it. Bring that elbow as high as you possibly can. That's going to pull your shoulder back and get that full engagement of the lats. So you're getting that full benefits, feel real good. And you wanna get that nice breathing down too. So as you bring it up, exhale, tense those muscles, take a nice deep breath on the way down. And get that nice fluid motion in there too. And now once you, so as you can see, I'm starting my left side. So my left side is my weaker side, because I'm right-handed. So I usually will start on my left, perform the allotted reps, 10 reps, move on to the right. Same thing, same motion, same positioning. Do the 10 reps. And then, if I'm dealing with any asymmetrical problems, specifically in this case, the lats, the back, you're gonna move back onto the left side, the weaker side, perform maybe a few extra reps, and then, uh, and then call it good there. And then on the next set, start on the left side, go to the right, go back to the left. So now over time, that's gonna force your left side or your weaker side, depending on which side it is, to catch up. Now, this is a perfect strategy that you can implement into your training to really make sure you're symmetrical as you can. That's why we include this day. And that was my long spiel on the unilateral work. But hopefully that answered any questions as far as like why there's unilateral work in play. Or if I am dealing with any asymmetrical problems, what should I do? What should I introduce to help with that? And the unilateral work is definitely the answer to that. We are on to the single arm press. And then we're doing it on the flat bench, as you can see here. And use, utilizing one side at a time. Now, a couple things to remember on this one, much like the single arm row, is that you don't want any torso rotation. You really wanna keep that torso planted in the, in the supine position firmly against the bench. So that way, when you bring that weight down, you're not rotating, trying to compensate for the stress that's on that muscle. You're bringing that elbow down, keeping that trunk in line, and then uh, pressing up from there to get that full activation in the chest. So you're getting that full stretch down, and then pressing up the top position. Now what you'll notice on this exercise is that there's going to be a lot of engagement in the core because once that weight, especially how heavy you're going to, if you're going somewhat heavy, what it's going to be doing is that weight is going to be wanting to pull you to one side and you're going to have to engage that core to straighten out that trunk so that way it's nice and stable to keep it in that position. So it's a great core exercise as well, these ones. And what you can see too is you can stretch your arm out um, to the opposite side to help balance you too. So you can either do that to counterbalance you 
you can hold onto the bench while you're doing it, or you can just place it on your hip. So there's kind of a few positions you can do with their opposite hand to help balance you out a little bit, kind of basically whatever works for you. And you can slightly bring it inward as you press up to the top position to get a little bit extra engagement in there. So single arm press, there you go. Now time to finish these off. We got a couple more here and then we'll move on to the next exercise. So we got the single arm shoulder press coming up and we're doing it in the standing position here. Now you'll notice as you're pressing up to the top position, all of a sudden all the weight is distributed more onto one side. But what's gonna help with this is bringing the weight slightly inward at the top position. So if you keep it out here, it's gonna wanna pull that shoulder down and away from you and that could be dangerous. So what you wanna do is when you're in this top position, as you can see, keep the the dumbbell a little bit closer to the body. The elbow is a little bit tighter as opposed to something like this. So you rotate it slightly inward. So it's gonna be a bit easier on the shoulder but also in the starting position for the press. And as you press up, you're gonna bring it inward here. So it's gonna be placing that weight distributed more straight down. It's gonna make you feel a bit more stable but you're still gonna feel a lot of that instability in there. So you're gonna really have to contract that trap and the core to stabilize you in this top position. Bringing it down, nice deep breath, and up, exhale, top position there. So you get that nice fluid motion. Oh yeah, you're gonna feel burn real quick on these ones. Then you're immediately gonna switch to the next side, perform it just like so, nice and slow. So what you wanna do is take a bit lighter in the weight on these ones, just until you can kinda get used to this motion, because the heavier you're gonna get, of course, it's gonna put you into a more compromised position, feel more unstable, and you could possibly lose your balance. And then again, you don't wanna hurt your shoulder there. You wanna make sure the muscles are engaged and activated accordingly and properly, so that way you can feel nice and stable and get the full benefit here. And if you need, you can always put that arm out for a little bit of extra balance there, counterbalance, to help you here. So in the standing position, if you want a little bit more advanced, just close your stance up a little bit, so that way when you're pressing, in that top position, really have to engage here. Oh, a little too tough. Widen the stance. That's better, good. And an exercise um, that you'll see sometimes is called military presses. Now for that is like you're basically standing at attention. Your feet are together, just like so. So when you're at attention, feet are together. Oh yeah, your basic support's really small. You're gonna keep a lot of that tension in the core to be able to press that weight to that top position and keep it stable. Oh yeah and you can feel the benefits real quick because your core actually kind of starts getting a little bit exhausted as you're doing it, along with the shoulders, of course. So there you go. We got a couple more sets on this one to finish it up, and then we're moving on to the very last exercise, which is gonna be abs, and specifically Otis ups. We are on to the last exercise of this workout and also the entire beginner's phase, first phase here. And you can see we got the station set up. I'm using a couple dumbbells to anchor my feet. This is gonna make the movement a little bit easier and more stable. We also have a couple light dumbbells here. You're gonna be getting down in the bottom position like you're about to do a sit up. And what you wanna do is roll your back up and press at the same time. So this is the end position here, much like a shoulder press. So you're gonna to try to get your vertical torso at least as much as you can. And then once you reach this top position, you're flexing in the elbows and rolling yourself back down to the bottom position, almost as in a chest press here, and then bring it back to the top position here. Now you can tell with this one, it's utilizing a lot of different muscles, so it's not just an ab exercise. It's also a little bit in the chest, in the shoulders, and uh, you'll feel the little bit in the hip flexors too, especially if you're anchoring your feet here, but you don't have to anchor your feet. Let's say you don't have an extra pair of dumbbells to do that in. You can obviously do it under a bench, uh, or anything stable enough to hone, hold your own body weight. But let's say you want to make this exercise a little bit more difficult for yourself. You're going to get in the same position with your feet flat on the floor, but now you're not going to have anything to hold yourself in. So you're going to have to really engage that core to try to stabilize yourself through the motion here. Now, like I was saying before, you want to focus on rolling your back up. Now, what I mean by that is let's say a typical sit-up. A lot of people make the mistake of keeping their upper back uh, excuse me, their torso, kind of rigid and straight. And what that's gonna do is put more stress on the hip flexors here because that's pretty much pulling yourself to that top position. Now, if you're rolling up, you're gonna be flexing in the spine like in a crunch. So the beginning position is flexing in the spine, rolling up, continuing that, and then straightening up at the top position here. 
And then once you reach out, you're gonna be flexing in the thoracic spine, and then rolling yourself back down nice and gently. So now the weight, this is what it looks like. So roll, and then press, straighten out, and then down, and then roll back down to the bottom position. So roll up and press, down, and roll back down to the bottom position. That's when you're getting the most engagement in the core. Because if you try to keep that body straight, those hip flexors are gonna be activating more than your abdominals to pull off that uh, motion there. So that's one thing I'd recommend. And if, if weight is a little too difficult for you, you don't have to do weight. You can just do your own body weight. But just get in that similar positioning as you would if you had some weight. There we go. That's the Otis up. Definitely a good exercise. And that's why we include it in the program. We're gonna do a couple more sets of this and then that wraps it up. So uh, I'm gonna do a little break, get my, get my breath back, and then finish the last uh, few sets here. There we go, that was the last day of the beginner phase, phase one of the dumbbell only program. Thank you so much for following along guys and girls. Hopefully you had a good time, hopefully you learned a few things here and there, but it's not done yet because we are on to phase two for the next video. It's gonna be a little bit more intense, it's introducing more exercises, and it's also switching on to some isolation work too. So there's still a long ways to go. And if you haven't yet, please pick up the dumbbell only program. And as always, stay buff.